welcome back to my channel it's been a hot minute i know i know and i'm so sorry but maybe i'm not i mean it is what it is <laughs> life is life anyway so here i am starting a painting that i started in september trust me guys it's been a long time and this is a painting um that will be one of our pets because we had one pet pass away say that 10 times fast and i was so glad that i actually painted her but then my kids were like we need a portrait of the other pet so this is going to be a portrait of our cat molly i did something a little bit different on this one i decided to work with a grid as you can see all the lines the squares on there just to help me really like do the sketching as you know as close to the reality as possible so that i would get my eyes and the nose and the markings and the mouth in the right place and here i just finished putting in the background which is a lovely pink i wanted to start with the eyes and i wanted to go section by section and try to get them as detailed as possible before moving on to the next section and that is just so that I feel like I'm progressing on the painting. Because if I do the whole painting in just like the first layer, it looks like a cartoon. And, and it just discourages me. So I tried this time around to just do section by section as realistic as possible. But leaving time for the final details in the end. Here I'm going in with like a mid-tone green. There's a couple of green colors in her eyes. And you mostly see me working on the left eye here. Or technically the right eye, honestly. But um, because it's all rinse and repeat for the other side, right? I did start with the eyes is because I wanted something to look back at me rather than having empty zombie eyes. I, I've done that before with paintings and it just, it bothers me. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And my kids also don't like to see a painting on my, my easel that just has like white for eyes. It's just creepy. The good thing about doing section by section, I can go in with smaller details already and that just makes me happy because I love working on the details. So if I can do smaller sections but get to play like that, it just makes my heart happy. And that's what this is all about, is making me happy. So here I am just doing a little bit of stippling, a little bit of tiny little dots, tiny little pieces to make this eye look less flat. starting to go in with a darker color around just to create a little bit of fur and um, all of the colors that I do like especially on the fur and like the bigger sections they are uh, kind of a mid-tone to what I want the final product to be because you know animal fur you're gonna have to layer it so this is like a Payne's gray there might be some white mixed into it but uh, it's not completely black Otherwise, you're not going to get the result you want. There will be parts of this painting that will be sped up as well as some pieces completely missing so there are times where i just can't film because sometimes my phone is used by one of my kids and at other times i just you know don't always feel like setting it all up um, especially when a painting takes you know long 
I mean, you guys don't want to see eight hours of footage, I'm sure. Like, if you do, let me know. But, you know, I think about 20 minutes, 30 minutes per painting is probably enough time to be looking at something being created. Just uh, let me know if you wanted to see something different, though. Now, this is going to go pretty quick. I'm just going to fill in, um, like, the face part here and the ears. And this is uh, obviously not black. It's a paints gray, and I'm just using a flat brush just to create, you know, um, that middle ground color to go over top later to create, you know, depth and highlights and shadows and all that fun stuff. This is a trick that I've picked up from another creator and I turn it upside down and that's for a particular reason. I'm right-handed and if the fur goes in a certain direction, my wrist just doesn't bend in certain ways to create that kind of a flow of fur. So I just turn it upside down and tip, turn your reference photo upside down as well. Itty bitty teeny weeny tiny little brush to start um, creating that nose and you'll see me go over this line probably four or five times and i'd rather do that than to do one big line and screw it up so you'll sometimes see me do certain sections or certain parts over and over and over again to get it right rather than go in too hard and then just mess it up and working on shading it right because yes she's black and white but you cannot just slap black and white on a canvas it's gonna look super flat so it's a building up of different colors different shades going back and forth and creating layers <music> This is one of my favorite techniques. Uh, coarser brush. I can't talk. Coarser brush and stippling away. Just I, that you. That way you get really nice texture real quick. And again, if you do things in sections, you get to play with details almost right away. Acrylic dries fast, so it doesn't take much. Just to you know, do one layer, clean your brush check your reference photo and then almost immediately you can go in with the next color and next layer. Although the face is far from done, it does have like that first basic layer on there. So it's going to get refined later on, trust me. Just going over the nostrils again because sometimes when it dries you know or when you paint over it with other paint uh, it kind of gets lost and you can just add this is just black and you can add the shadows back in if you need to background about Molly we adopted her from the SPCA about two years ago she's been with us ever since and uh, she had a little bit of a health scare this summer so now she's on special diet and uh, keeping an eye on her kidneys so we may not have her with us forever as like you know she might not live a normal cat life it may be shortened a little bit because of her kidney issues but uh, we love her nonetheless And 
here I get to play with some details and try to make it look more like kitty fur. Now this is the final part for the nose here where I go in with like a, you know, even lighter color than the colors that were already on there. I know that her face really looks like paint by numbers right now, but um, I have it zoomed in pretty far too and I do step back after each session just to see okay what does it look like does it look okay where do I need to change things now with this part I decided to do tiny little circles because I wanted to create a bit of a soft highlight on her nose and once it dried it actually looked pretty cool if I say so myself I'm not an expert but as long as I'm happy with the result right lighting changed a little bit here not sure why sometimes the light just does weird things anyway we're going in with a angled brush it's kind of a flat yet angled brush and fill in the the part of her chest where she's uh, white obviously you do not go in with white white is the final final color you add at the very very end so this is a gray obviously and then you'll see a lot of rinse and repeat coming up here into trying to create that fur type structure or texture rather. Going in with a different brush, trying to create fur. And this is a slightly lighter tone than what I just did. And I'm just gonna go and uh, create strokes here that leave enough gaps in between like you don't want to just completely cover everything up you want to leave gaps so that you're going to create a little bit of a 3d type illusion Changing brushes, still looking for a fur type um, texture here, and this is uh, a shade lighter. So what I did is like, I have the shade that I used and then I just add a little bit of white to it. And then the next layer, I add a little bit of white to it. And that's how I create the different colors and the different layers. And just leave some gaps where you want the shadows to be. And, um, you just rinse and repeat this process a few times and then it starts to look like fur. And here we go again, yet a shade lighter. And it's okay to change the direction of the strokes a little bit as well. So you get just, you know, almost like look at, it almost seems like you can look into it. Liner brush for some tinier details. This is not white. Still again, I'm only reserving the white for the very final part of the painting and for the final details. zooming out here so you can see a little bit more of the bigger picture. On 
unfortunately this next part is a little bit blurry i don't know sometimes my camera does not really record very well my apologies anyway so we're going in with um just like filling this in like wanted to fill in the blanks and um then work on the black fur so we start with gray because we do not go in with plain black and then it's a matter of kind of filling in with strokes and it looks horrible at first and i have to trust the process every single time i'm like oh my gosh this is not looking good this is gonna turn into like something weird and then in the end it actually works out <laughs> so even i like at times i'm like uh what am i doing but in the end it always seems to turn out okay right now it looks like feathers more than than her fur but it's okay don't worry it'll get to where it needs to be and now i'm gonna definitely go in with like a darker color to create a little bit more depth and um it'll dry a little flatter too right now it's wet so you can definitely see the wetness of the paint but um and i also use glazes right so that basically means you have the paint but you water it down quite a bit and then you create a little bit of a glaze which is really good for creating shadows or changing the color slightly you know you might have filled something in with a certain color and you can use a glaze to sort of change the tone a little bit and here closer to the white part of her chest it was definitely darker so you'll see me putting a little bit more of a darker shadow in around that part apologize if the audio has changed all of a sudden I thought my computer had died but it was trying to get into the screen protector but my screen went black so I couldn't see the video while I was doing my voiceover technical difficulties oh my gosh so right now I'm in a different place in my house so audio might be slightly different my apologies so after this part this painting sat for four months on my easel untouched and then on January 31st I decided I want to get this sucker done so I finished it that day within an hour by adding the final details so here this is just plain titanium white and I'm just trying to get the, the final details in her chest and create a little bit of a gradient between the black and the white part of her chest enjoy this part when things just start to come together and like you know that you're almost done yeah and I love doing the tiny teeny weeny strokes I just like I've said in many of my videos I live for this part Here you see me do the upside down trick again because when it comes to the whiskers if I try to do it like the normal way my wrist just does not want to bend that way and I'm bound to make mistakes I'm not the best at doing whiskers to start with I'm still struggling with those so they're not perfect but at least they kind of look like you know her actual whiskers in the long run you're going to see me struggle here because my lines are a little bit too thick um, and they don't really go in a straight line. And this is just one of those areas where I definitely still need to improve. I'm not the best at whiskers yet, but you know, practice makes perfect, they say. So we'll keep on going on. So 
because it looked a bit messy and it looked like they were just floating out of nowhere, I am just glazing here with black that is kind of watered down to try to make it look like they're actually part of her face rather than just slapped on. <laughs> and I'm doing that on the other side as well. And I'm just trying to create some more shadows and trying to correct some of those lines that were just crooked or not even complete. And they just looked a little too thick and just weird. down she goes one more time for some of the whiskers that are at the top there those look better don't they that's what I should have done on her face <laughs> and that was the final brush stroke you guys and here's the big reveal there's our Miss Molly we love her so much Photo on the left is the actual photo. The middle is the one when I pulled her out and put her on a background with a grid. And then on the right is the final product. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Feel free to subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if you wanna see another animal. In the meantime, stay happy, keep your peace, and we'll see you in the next one.